program coming to you from our studios in Mott Auditorium, Pasadena, California. Our host is Dr. Cheon, pastor of Harvest Rock Church, and we have some very special guests today. John and Carol are not from Toronto, Canada. Pastor Che, I am excited about today's program. I am so thrilled, Jim, that John and Carol could take time out of their very busy schedule. I remember John and Carol uh, talking to me a year ago when we invited them to speak, and he told me that he had over 300 invitations around the world, and uh, and yet, in God's sovereign uh, way, he brought you, John and Carol, to us in January of 1995. But instead of just jumping in with what happened in Pasadena when you came and the renewal meetings began, I would like for you to just go ahead and just share your testimony, and uh, maybe just begin uh, uh, with um, uh, how the Holy Spirit moved in Toronto, and then uh, then we can talk about what's happening here in Pasadena. Well, Che, it's... Um you know, I wish we could tell you how spiritual we were and how we prayed this down and, you know, did all the right things and had all the components in place. But really, Carol and I were just very much ordinary pastors, you know, praying and asking God to give revival and bring revival to our church. Our, you know, our problem was we didn't really know what it looked like, did we, hon? No, we didn't. And um, But we were kind of getting used up on all that we had been doing, seeing the... You know, trying to get people set free, trying to get their hurts and fears and pains healed. And after years and years of that with, you know, somewhat limited success, uh, I think, I, I wouldn't have said it this way, but where I was left was my God was too small and the mm. devil was too big, you know. Right. And so we went to a meeting where we saw it quite the other way around, where wonderful things happened, physical healings, a lot of conversions. And we came out there saying, you know, yes, we have a big God after all. And he's able to save a thousand at a time. And he can do these things. And, and we came out of there, and, and Carol was powerfully touched at that meeting. I mean, it was like, um, we came out of there thinking, if, if we're going to see change, it's going to have to be the anointing of the Spirit. So we um, sought the Lord, and he spoke and said, if you're serious about this, I want you to do two things. I want your mornings, first of all. Um, and I want you to hang around with those that carry an anointing. And so we did. When did this happen, Carol, John? When did uh, God speak to you to just give your mornings to God and, and to hang around with people who are carrying the anointing? That would have been September of 92. Mm. And so that was several years before. Yeah, the uh, Randy Clark years. visit. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why don't you share a little bit about that? What happened? You, well, maybe back up and share about what happened in Argentina. Yes, we, we mm. in the course of things, we went to Argentina in November of 93. This is after we've spent, you know, like over a year just really soaking in the Lord's presence morning after morning. We would worship, we would read the Word, we would meditate, we would pray together. And what happened during that time was we fell in love with Jesus again mm. for us. And so we, we were, you know, so dissatisfied with being the CEO of a Christian organization and being so busy and overworked, you know, because we went into the ministry because we love people and we wanted to see lives changed. And so we went to Argentina uh, to a conference on taking your cities for God. And down there we met Claudio Friesen, uh, who prayed for us. And he, he asked me a question, do you want it, you know? And it was like, do I want it? Are you kidding? I've been asking God for an hour. I mean, you know, hour after hour, day after day, <laughs> over a year here. And I said, oh, yes. I knew what he meant. See, he meant, do you want the anointing of the Holy Spirit to be active in your life? So he prayed for us. And I came home feeling something had changed. But Carol really got touched. Why don't you tell him about that? Mm -hmm. I got, um, I never really had holy laughter before. And I and Claudio prayed for me, and and some of the other um, uh, Canadians and and Americans that were with us, and it was just incredible. I just had this incredible joy fill my heart, and I just laughed and laughed and laughed, and and just so was so filled, and then came uh, with such an enthusiasm for Jesus, and and on the way home, um, again my one of my strong points isn't evangelism. But I led two people to Christ on Wonderful. the airplane coming That's home. Perfect. And it was just so exciting. And we yeah. just came back thinking, yes, Lord, you know, you are powerful. You are mighty. You can use even me, you know. And so we began to really say, God, we want to go for it. We want to uh, 
um, start night and start meetings. And again, our modeling was um, healing meetings and evangelism. Mm-hmm. And so that's what we thought we would do. John phoned our, our uh, senior guy, uh, Jeremy, and said, we're going to start monthly healing services. Just an emphasis on healing, yeah, really. Right. You know, we would believe God to heal some people and see some people saved. And so that was our sort of grid. That was our plan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Until. <laughs> then we heard that Randy Clark from St. Louis was also being used. And uh, I called him right away. I knew Randy, not well, but I'd known him from years before. And I uh, said, oh, i got to have you come. And he was, we were about in the same place. We were wanting more, but it was like, he says, gosh, John, I don't know if anything will happen. I know it happened once, but you might be wasting your money, you know. And I said, well, I don't care. I want you to come. So he said, well, I only got two messages. I've got my testimony, and I'll preach on the prodigal <laughs> son. He says, so I need to bring my youth pastor, and he can preach too, and I'll preach too. That's I mean, see, fine. that's where we were, you know. It's just amazing. And you had no idea that it would just continue after even those messages. No, we had no idea. We were hopeful, Jay. Uh See, there was a longing in my heart to see God move in protracted meetings. Mm. I had read about, uh, you know, former revivals, how it was on and on ongoing. And, uh, you know, Billy Sunday in Atlanta in the 20s. Sure, and Azusa Street. Yeah, they went all those months and all those people converted. It was incredible. What, you know, momentum is not a spiritual word, but yet I think you build upon... And it builds and builds and builds, you know. And we had seen that dynamic in our summer camps. Mm -hmm. John used to always say, oh, I really want to have summer camp all year long, Lord. Well, you know, we'd be there for two weeks, and and we'd come together from all over our province of Ontario. And it would just nicely get going. We'd be airborne, you know. Right. And then it would be over. We'd have to go home. home. It's like, just like that. It's over. And it was like, man, we just got going, Lord. How can we... Mm -hmm. And so we were longing for protracted means. Well, when Randy came, it was uh, incredible. I mean, he showed up. We had expectations, you know, about mm-hmm. an inch high. But we weren't uh, expecting 10 feet high kind of results. And so uh, the, basically the leaders of our church came out the first night. There was about 120 of us mm-hmm. in our old church location at the other end of the runway. Mm-hmm. And... Um, Randy gave his testimony and called everybody up for prayer, and the power of God fell upon them. Now, the difference, you see, it's not like a spectator watching people be touched somewhere by the Holy Spirit. See, I'm the pastor. This is my church. These are my people. I know those people. They won't do that. You know, this this one is so solid, they would never act that way. There's another one over there that I've given up on. They were never going to get any help. And, And they were just so overcome, wonderfully overcome. And uh, they're all over the floor. And see, now, again, I should mention this. We were used to seeing the manifestations of the Holy Spirit come, perhaps touching one or two. If you had to visit our church on any Sunday, you'd have seen, mm-hmm. you know, someone getting deliverance maybe, and another one getting prayer and mm-hmm. healing. Someone else might have been crying. One other might have been out on the floor. Uh, that, that was kind of what we were used to. But we weren't used to the whole church coming forward for prayer and getting totally overcome. Mm. I mean, some of them laughed for hours, and they'd come back the next night and laugh for hours, and it just went on and on. Uh, others would be out for hours. We had, I remember one, it was the little girl. Somebody came out and said, did anybody know this little six-year-old girl? She'd been out here for like an hour and a half or whatever. And we didn't even know her name. And it turns out her, her mother is out too in the other room i mean the both of them just gone in the presence of the lord so we began to think well this is amazing all these strong manifestations but you see it wasn't the manifestations that impressed me it was interviewing credible witnesses in the aftermath yes and they told us how again and again and again just their lost for words i mean I'm so overwhelmed by the love of God. I mean, Mm -hmm. my marriage is healed. My family's healed. My relationship with my son is healed. I can't put the Bible down. The Lord's waking me up at 3 in the morning to pray. All these stories, you know, start coming in from my people. Mm. And they're just getting hungry and hungry. So by the time we came to the fourth day, 
What did I tell Randy, Carol? You can't go home, Randy. <laughs> We're not going to let you go home. Randy. <laughs> this is too good. I said, you cannot go home. We've waited too long for revival. God is visiting us here. I said, I know, we'll, we'll cover your pulpit. We'll fly your family up here. But we've got to do this another night. So he phoned his wife and told her, you know, God's really moving. And she says, well... Okay, you can stay two more days. And I'm great. Two more days. We're going to go two more days, you know. And uh, so we did those two days, and we phoned her back, you know. Guess what? i got to stay two more days. And so Randy was with us on and off for 40 days where we just You're kept going. Yeah, and finally he just said, well, you know, he had to go back to his church and everything else. But you see, by this time, something we had discovered uh, Randy had brought the fire, mm -hmm. but we had caught it. So there was a transference, too. Yes. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And w w not just Carol and I, but our whole ministry team. So there's about 50 or 60 of us that are just praying for people. And, of course, the numbers just exploded. We had to move out of our church, went into a banquet hall that would hold about 1,500 people. Mm. And, uh, you know, our friends came and their friends came. And the Lord had told me at the onset, like, you know, we're just quite overwhelmed. And I'm saying, Lord, what do I do? What do I do? And, and he gave me, you know, just three things. He said, I don't want you to advertise this. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to market this or exploit this in any way to um, advance your own ministry. And I don't want you to try to control this. Mm -hmm. That sounds like the most important factor. Because that's the bottom so, Lord, line, what do we do? He said, just no. give it away. No. Now, the controlling issue was also good because when we started our first church in Stratford, Ontario in 81, we kind of had a mini revival, a mini outpouring. And, uh, you know, it was, it was so new to us. You know, we, we were frightened by it. And we were trying to control it and keep it tidy and everything else. And some of the young people got praying for others. And, you know... Uh, it seemed to us that it was getting a little weird. And we we got frightened, and I just said, okay, I got to the point where I said, all right, none of you guys are praying anymore. From now on, Carol and I will do all the ministry. Because we thought being tidy was important. Since, yes. Well, what actually happened is it very quickly just stopped. And it took me about three years to figure out that I had killed single-handedly a move of God mm -hmm. through, through fear, which caused me to control. Mm. And I promised him with tears, Lord, if ever you move again, I will not try to control this. And if ever you have mercy on me again, you know, we will let you do what mm -hmm. you want to do. I think it was very significant what you're sharing because uh, for so long, many people have been asking, why Toronto? Why John and Carol? And mm -hmm. just to hear that background, that you made that kind of commitment, covenant with God. Mm -hmm. God, I don't want to control it. And I think the Holy Spirit was saying, that's what I've been waiting for. I'll pick you. I'll set you apart. And uh, it's been marvelous. And how many people now have come through the doors and you've prayed for them? Because it's hit the world. Hundreds worldwide. of thousands, Jay. Um, probably we're getting close to 300,000 different individuals with a total evening attendance of close to 700,000. Incredible. Incredible. And we've That's laid hands two on them years. All, our ministry team. Because you're coming up to your two-year anniversary. But the, Yeah, our two-year anniversary is just about here. And, you know, the thing about the control, uh, uh, let me clarify this, because it, our, our place is not a free-for-all. It's not mm -hmm. anything goes, right. any old spirit, you know. Right. It's very, very closely monitored and carefully um, monitored with our ministry team. But we don't make... Uh, rules that would put a ceiling on things, but rather bring loving correction to individuals who need it. And so that's how we do it. With a trained ministry team, we try to pastor the people. And sometimes we'll say, you know, just can we just redirect this a little bit? Just take the peace of God. And, you know, but rather than saying, okay, you're not praying and none of those kind of manifestations and, you know, a hard line, well defined parameters that would be very restrictive to what the yes, minister right. wants to do. And so we just want the river to flow, you know. And it's all like, these thousands have been now. It's like allowing the wheat and the tares to grow together mm -hmm. instead of just cutting down, trying to stop something that you think may be of the flesh, but in fact, it could be of the spirit. And we could just quench inadvertently by trying to control. 
Yeah. But John, yeah. John has said uh, so many times, especially to our own people, you know, will you give me permission to, keep, to bring correction to you? Mm. And they'll put up their hands and say, oh, yes. And then he'll say, you know, will you even give me permission to correct you, even if it turns out that I'm wrong? Mm. And um, we have gone to people and, and corrected them. And, and then when we see that it's, oh, it was God, we'll go back to them and say, that really was, you know, will you forgive us? Right. And so we're learning as we go as well. Mm -hmm. And we don't have all the answers, but we're trying to walk in love and, and correction to the individuals so that it's a safe place for right. them mm -hmm. to. Yes. Why all the controversy? John, you know, you, you're a solid evangelical Christian. You grew up a Baptist like myself, Southern yes. Baptist, uh, Ontario Bible College. Ontario Bible College. And, um, you know, I mean... The it, new dean there loves it, incidentally. <laughs> <laughs> Theologically, you as Orthodox. My, how times have changed since I was there. Yeah, that's right. But what's the controversy all about? Well, I think the controversy is um, a failure to understand the purposes of God, or the power of God, if I may say. If you get focused on the manifestations and sort of have a value system that allows God to do this but not that, um, you, you would focus on the manifestation and say, this is the wildest thing I've ever seen in my life. How could this be God? You know, and so we, we kind of address controversy and try to ask questions and bring pastors alongside and talk to them with it. But I think basically people are frightened, Jay. Mm -hmm. They're afraid of the unknown. It's like walking through the woods that you've never gone through before, and you're yeah. afraid of every sound. Of afraid the noise. of deception. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you know, said something um, at one of our meetings that the greatest deception, and I want you to finish that phrase, is what? The greatest deception, in my opinion, is not recognizing a move of God when it comes through. See, that is sobering. See, Jesus said, or rather, it says in First John of Jesus, He came unto His own and his own received him not. Now see, those religious people, the Jews in his day, were very much waiting for the Messiah. Right. And when the Messiah came, they didn't recognize him because why? They were deceived. Mm -hmm. They were expecting something else. Right. They didn't expect uh, some guy from Nazareth that was born in a barn in Bethlehem and had no pedigree or influence or education or, you know, all the all of the socially acceptable things and whatever. And uh, so even when he came with strong anointing and strong uh, power gifts and healing, right. um, they, they had to realize that their position with the people was what was at stake, and they weren't willing to give it up. So then you get defensive about you know other issues that are not really the issue. Um, and so... That's the greatest deception, and it's happened all along. That Jesus told them that we sent you prophets, we sent you uh, religious men and wise men, and some you stoned and some you killed, and all of this kind of stuff, so that the blood of all the prophets is on you. You continually keep missing the move of God, right? That's right. And then now the Messiah is here, and you miss him too. When we think, wow, poor guys, that was the Old Testament, you know. Mm. But no, the New Testament is the same way. And we see how Paul was one who was missing it in the New Testament. And he was intercepted by a powerful spiritual experience, wasn't right, it? The road to Damascus, right. The road to Damascus. And Paul wasn't afraid to talk about his experience, by the way. He mentioned it three times in the book of Acts, which was a subjective, wonderful, mountaintop experience that he had that revolutionized his life. That's right. And so... I think we need to be uh, free to talk about that. But anyway, back on the other thing, all down through history, uh, existing Christians have missed a move of God when it came. And these are people who love God, who love know God. the Word, because the Pharisees obviously knew the Bible inside and out, I mean the Old Testament, and yet they missed the day of visitation. They missed the day of visitation. And so Wesley, a devout Anglican, is kicked out of the Anglican Church and has to form a new movement called the Methodist Church. Mm. He never wanted to do that, but he had to. Now, you think, oh, isn't that too bad? Well, the Methodists had a great wave and a lot of good things. But then a hundred years go by, and uh, they're dry now. Mm -hmm. and, and along comes a guy named William Booth, a Methodist, and he's fired up. He's been touched by God. He's got a new wave, and he's out in the streets, and he's, you know, doing all these things. 
But now he's too much for the Methodists who have forgot what revival looked like, and so he's kicked out and has to form the Salvation Army. And it just keeps going on with the holiness people when the baptism of the Holy Spirit falls right over here in Azusa Street right someplace. Right in Los Angeles, right? Um, they uh, kick out the people that can't seem to get with the new thing because, well... Our history is about renewal and revival, but we never saw this tongue stuff before, so this mm-hmm. can't be God. And they're still fighting about that one. Can you imagine? Right. And so Jesus said to the Sadducees in Matthew 22, You err because you do not know either the Scriptures or the power of God. And so I think if you want to, if you want to uh, inoculate yourself against deception and error, and their error was they didn't recognize the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Then get to know, gnosko, the scripture. That doesn't mean memorize the book of Leviticus. That means get to know it heart to heart intimately, the scriptures. Understand the heart of the scriptures and get to know, gnosko, experience the power of God. Right. So you get those two things. You get the word and the spirit. And you see results, and it all just says, yes, this thing works. That's right. We're to worship him in spirit and in truth. That's what makes all the difference. It's not just the truth. Otherwise, we become biblicist, and the Bible becomes, you know. (laughs) The study of the Bible. Yeah, right. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it just becomes a head thing. It becomes a theology. It becomes all those stuff that are not wrong, of course, in and of themselves. But if there's no heart in it, you know. My big message is the love of God. If you don't have that, well, it really doesn't matter what you have. I want to ask Carol, how has this current outpouring impacted you personally? Oh, I just just blossomed in in all the things that I thought I couldn't do. (laughs) Uh, I've been falling in love with Jesus more and more and more. He's given me revelations of the bride of Christ. I've had visions of uh, Jesus. And me becoming the bride and the church becoming the bride Wonderful. and just uh, getting up speaking I, I you know I would speak maybe Mother's Day <laughs> <laughs> and I would really struggle and thought I couldn't ever do that and, and God has been enabling me to get up and, and speak in front of people and in front pray of for people thousands of people thousands all over the world people, yes. she does it's amazing and pray for people and just see lives transformed mm. I think that's the greatest joy just to see pastors and their wives mm-hmm. and, and the church just on fire and see them just bloom. So it's been so wonderful. Fantastic. Okay, so much fun. You know, and Carol's you. gift, Jay, has always been her love. She can love people to life and did that with me. And yet now to see the Holy Spirit coming and, and putting this prophetic edge on her, visions, dreams, revelation, and great boldness. I mean, she's mm-hmm. become absolutely fearless in ministry and yet she hasn't lost the the sensitive edge the love the innocence you know that's on her and it's just been a, a wonderful thing for me to watch to we're the seeing change acts in her. to fulfill it. the sons and daughters mm-hmm. will prophesy and yes. here we are the holy spirit's being poured out on all flesh again yeah it's just absolutely marvelous it is jim you have anything you wanted to add as we're just talking so many things go through my mind uh i know that so many pastors out there and john this is your heart that are very dry inside and you said something at the beginning of the program that you and carol took a year and gave your mornings to the lord and Mm -hmm. that passes us by but that's not easy to do we get caught up as pastors very hard we're we're busy doing this got to go to a meeting but to give your morning to the lord every day for a year speaks volumes to me and uh, the lord gave you a few gems of wisdom didn't he Mm -hmm. could you maybe share a few of those in the last couple of minutes well he 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 spoke to us many many times mostly going through the the word and, and worshiping and praying together but there was intimacy that was restored you know and uh I can remember one day that we were praying and reading through the book of Exodus, and it was the part where Moses was crying out to the Lord, show me your glory, show me your yes. glory. And that was our heart. Oh, yeah. God, we want to see your glory. Show us your glory, Lord. And then out of my heart came this cry, Lord, why are you so hard to find? Why is it that, you know, we can never quite reach you? Um, and like that, he spoke to me and he said, it's because when I reveal my 
impart to people, I become very vulnerable. Yes. And, you know, I'd never, ever heard of the Lord being vulnerable. You know, I I knew he was omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent, you know, and he was vulnerable. Mm. And just that this whole revelation descended on me to, to realize that when any person, you know, gives their heart to someone, uh, you give them along with that the ability to hurt them. Yes. And I just would realize how that I was coming to God and said, oh, God, you're here. And I'd get my shopping list out and say, you know, we need a new car yes, and new yes, this yes, and yes, that. Yes, do that yes, and another. And it would hurt him. Yes. And he would just pull back. Maybe. And so as I repented about that, he spoke again and he said, you know, John, many of my people have married me for my money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I just wow. said, oh, God, I'm so sorry, Lord. I don't want your stuff. I want you. And, and, and that was the kind of thing he was saying to us, saying life-changing things that were really, really wonderful issues of the heart. And then it kind of got us ready for more when all of this began. Yes. The thing about the shopping list, I remember when you uh, shared that here at Mott, it just hit me. And uh, from then on, my prayers have been changed. My wife and I, we don't ask God for things. We just tell him we love him. And he, he gives us what we need. It's his, it's his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yes, That's it right. is. A wonderful yes, Father. Amen. Well, we are about out of time today. This program is zipped by, and uh, we hope that you could join us next time, if you will. Be so kind as to join us next week for the continuation of this. That's right. We're going to continue with John and Carol, and I just want to say once again, thank you for taking time to be with us. Thank you for loving us, because that love has been so demonstrated time and time again. And again, I want to say we love you. Yes. Yes. You guys are easy to love. You sure are. Praise the Lord. And that concludes this edition of The Father's Blessing. And John and Carol will be with us next week.